So here's the first step to solving any word problem, especially if this is your first class with me. The first step to solving any word problem is to forget the information, just go straight after the question sentence. You want to know why you're here to begin with. Why are you breathing with this problem in your face? The moment you know why you walked into a room, the faster you can work out a solution. But if you're overwhelming yourself with information, like a recipe calls for blah, 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 sometimes you might let that anxiety creep in and you might forget what's actually going on. Let me go ahead and show you what's going on here. Straight to the question. It says, how many grams of spices must he use? And there's the word if at the beginning of the sentence, which is going to be important information. So let's just make sure we know what we're looking for, everybody. It says, if James uses 20 grams of sugar, how many grams of spices must he use? Everyone, are we looking for sugar or spices or something else? What are we looking for? Spices. Yes, grams of spices. We gotta make sure we read the question carefully here. Remember guys, you're only gonna get as far as the materials that you use. So if you haven't taken advantage already of our Memorial Day sale, you can get up to $100 off of our plans for a short time only. That way you can raise your score and get the job you want. We make the process as easy as humanly possible because you don't have to guess on what's gonna be on the test. All you have to do is once you sign up, all you have to do is sit down and put in effort because everything is lined up for you. So if you're tired of all the guesswork and all the frustration and all the test anxiety, we've got your back. Stop holding yourself back. You know that you need help. Get into it and let's ace the ASVAB together. I'm Coach Anderson as always. There's my phone number. Check out the details of the program here and use the code MD23 to get that discount. I'll see you there, my party people. Let's ace the ASVAB. The word if, again, all that's doing is giving you information that's attached to this, that's related to this. So if 20 grams of sugar, that's how much we have. What we're really looking for is grams of spices. So let's write that down here. I'm looking for blank grams of spices. And I have 20 grams of sugar. So I'll just say 20, blank grams of spices with 20 grams of sugar. Is that all right for you guys right there? If I'm writing down what the question's asking me to find, I'm looking for the number of grams of spices if I have 20 grams of sugar. Like notice, they're in the same sentence. It says, if we have this, how much of that? That's telling you, that is cluing you in on the relationship between those two pieces of information. Number two, Let's write down the information and this is where you're going to see how to tell when you're dealing with a proportion problem. I think that's the biggest question of the day. You know, how do you know when you're dealing with a proportion question? Watch. The first sentence reads, a recipe calls for eight grams of sugar for every 28 grams of spices. My party people, let me know if you saw what just happened. Let me read that again for you. Let me read that again for you. A recipe calls for eight grams of sugar for every 28 grams of spices. True or false, the first sentence makes a relationship between spices and sugar. Okay, it's unanimous. Everyone in the chat box right now so far is saying true. Cool. Now, another question, true or false? In the red, in the question sentence, in what we highlighted here, there was a relationship stated between spices and sugar. Ah, oh. huh. My party people, do you, yes or no, do you see that we have two comparisons comparing the same things? On the first sentence, sugars and spices. Second sentence, sugar and spices. Do you see that we have two sentences comparing the same things? That's all you have to ask yourself. Like, did you notice that? Did you intuitively see that? Because the moment that you do, that's the moment you can guarantee that you have a proportion question. Again, it all ties to the same main idea. 
compare the same things in the same way. The proportion question will compare the same things. It's up to you to make sure that they're compared in the same way. Let me show you how this works. In blue, I'll highlight this over here. Eight grams of sugar for every 28 grams of spices. So I'll say right over here. Notice how what I wrote over here was spices first. Let me do my job here and be consistent. I'll start with the 28 grams of spices first. Is that okay with everybody? Cool. So with that, 28 grams of spices with eight grams of sugar. Now, visually, can we confirm this now? I know my handwriting today is trash, but with that, can we see that what, it, that what we have here, comparing the same things in the same way? We're looking for grams of spices. We can write X for that if we want to, if we dare to. But we have spices to sugar, spices to sugar. We can make a proportion out of this. Is that true? We can make a proportion out of this. Excellent. 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 Let's do it. So I can make this proportion any way I want. I'm just going to go ahead and do the straight up way where I'm going to do spices over here on top, sugar on bottom. So I'll do spice and that'll be sugar. That's just to show you what's going on. And then on the right side, again, just make sure you have the same comparison. So I'll write this down and I'll say 28 grams. That's four spices. And then we have eight grams of sugar on the bottom. And so whether this is your first or 50th YouTube video of mine, it doesn't matter. Why don't you join me for a live class? That way you can ask questions, raise your score and get the job you want for free. Again, I host classes once a week on Zoom, typically on Mondays. So go ahead and click the link up there or down here somewhere, register for free, and you get my free practice test that has video solutions so you can learn from every mistake. That's what it's all about here, my party people. I wanna help you succeed, so don't hesitate. Sign up for free, and then let's get back to this problem here. Let's keep raising our scores. Cool. We've set up one possible proportion. Again, it's, you can set this up six different ways. In term, yeah, visually, you can set it up six different ways. But they all, as long as they compare the same things in the same way, you're good. You're good. But now that we're here, we can elect to solve this. Who here is looking at 20 times 28 and wants to cross multiply? Who wants to cross multiply here? Yeah, I want to cross multiply. All right, cool. That's unanimous. That's from everybody. Perfect. Let's go and try it out here. So here we go. <laughs> Let me get this going for you. Um, actually, I'll feel a lot better if I went ahead and took this, moved it over here, and I'm just going to rewrite it in black. X over 20, same thing here. 28 over 8. So let's cross multiply here. What we have is X times 8. Everybody, X times 8 is going to be what? 8x, perfect. And then let's see what we got here. 20 times 28. Might be big for some of us. Might be big for some of us. But at the end of the day, if we go ahead and do it, 28 times 20, if we do it quickly, 8 times 0, 2 times 0, drop a 0 there. 8 times 2 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4, carry the 1 is 5. So we have 560. So that may have taken a little bit of time, but nonetheless, we got it done. Then we have 8x equals 560. So we have to divide both sides by what, everybody? We divide both sides by what? Perfect. We divide both sides by 8. Because again, that's the method, right? Cross, multiply, and divide. Nice and easy. And we have ourselves x equals, well, 560 divided by 8. Well, 56 divided by 8 is 7. So 560 divided by 8 is 7d. Cool, 70. And there we have it. All good, all set, all fun. Who here is in agreement with this answer? Who here is confident that that all made sense? Again, that's your general method, right? That's your general method always works. It might take slightly longer, but if this was a practice test and you had this question, 
you could do cross multiplication and division for this exact same numbers, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You can get that done in under two and a half minutes. Now, let me show you how much more of an advantage you can give yourself if you know mental math. Let me show you here. Let me go ahead and copy this page and go ahead and paste it right below. And let me just invite you to see how much better this can be for you. Again, if you emphasize mental math, if you emphasize understanding this at its core. So let me move all that, get all that out, and let me zoom in. Let me just do it live for you. If it doesn't make too much sense, no worries, but this is what I hope you can work toward. So boom, if I'm looking at this live, the first thing I see, okay, bet, 28 and eight, I'm gonna vertically simplify here. I'm gonna simplify the fraction. In my head, I'm gonna write, hey, divide by four, divide by four. So the new fraction is gonna be x over 20 equals seven over two. Next, next thing I think of, horizontal simplification, 20 and two, both of those, they're divisible by two. So the new fraction I have is x over 10 equals seven over one. All right, cross multiply and divide. x times one, 10 times seven. And I can get that done quickly. And as always, my party people, thanks for watching. You can subscribe with that button right there. And you can also see a link to a video just like this one right up there. But most importantly, if you want the program and you want to raise your score the right way, every step of the way with my support, there's that link at the bottom left. Go ahead, click that link, watch the video on how the program works, subscribe and raise your score.